Hi there, this is John for KillerPHP.com and today what we're doing is we're looking at how we can write a very simple MVC framework from scratch using PHP 5.3 and so I'm kind of going out of my way to show you all the neat new features in PHP 5.3 and soon to be PHP 6. So over the last couple videos we've looked at how we can create anonymous functions You'll notice that we're dealing with namespaces at the top. We've also looked at how we can create inheritance structures and implement interfaces, all of this stuff which has to do more with object-oriented programming in general. And in the last video, we looked at how we could basically create a form and post the results back to the controller. So I have this default.php file, which is currently sitting in killerphp com killer php views and it's sitting in the index default uh, the index folder so in views we've got index and we've got test test is from an earlier video when we were dealing with an index controller and a test controller and seeing the differences but in the index controller we've got default.php which is a form and then we've got learn php which is another action and then we've got welcome PHP, which is the welcome page that we were playing with. So these were just some simple examples of the controller architecture. Now we're going to be looking at how we can save the data in the model using the simplest form of persistence in PHP, which would be session. So session variables are variables that are stored on the server, and they're done so by setting a key or a cookie on the user's browser. So what happens is you go to the website and a cookie, a tiny little text file, is stored on the user's computer. And that you, tiny little text file has a very, very long encrypted key. And that long and encrypted key corresponds with a long and encrypted key on the server. And using that long and encrypted key, the server and the browser, the user running the browser, are able to uh, pair up and any data that is stored in the session variables is made accessible to that user. So that's kind of quickly how that works. What we're going to do is we're going to rely on this as a way of carrying data over from one stage or one one page to another page. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I go back to my index controller here <clears throat> you can see that I've got this default action and it's basically just var dumping the request. So if I go back here and I say hello and world and my address and I submit this query then I'm gonna get hello and world and my address. Now what if because we're at the default action what if I wanted to check to see if a particular user has already put in their name and their address well, the first thing we need to do is we need to start up the session variable. And to do that, we need to go back to our index.php file. And the index.php file is acting as our, as our bootstrap in, for all intents and purposes, at least in this project. So we are bootstrapping our application. We're, we're starting it up. We're firing it up in the index.php file. So right after we specify the namespace, I'm going to put in session underscore start and what this will do is this will start the session variables up for our application now if we weren't doing this with an MVC application or if we hadn't written this MVC architecture that every single entry point into our application whether it was the index.php file or any other PHP file that somebody wanted to directly access we'd have to put in session start so already because we have this idea of a dispatcher and all requests are being run through index.php, we only need to declare this once. So with session start declared, we can start using session variables. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the index controller, and I'm going to check to see if somebody has posted back with a first name and a last name. So I'm going to say if request first name if this is set and 
the last name is set, then we want to do something a little different. We want to go to the session variable and say current user is equal to and here we're going to create a new com killer PHP models user with these parameters. So with current user set on my welcome page instead of just creating this new random user I'm going to say that this user variable is actually going to equal whatever's in session or current user. And if the current user is not there, then we're going to change the view a bit. So I'm going to say that there's a new parameter in the welcome action called user exists and it will equal whatever is set session current user is. So this will be, you know, a true or false statement. Now, if the user doesn't exist, we're going to have to show something different, right? So, if I go back to my welcome action, and I say index slash welcome, I'm going to get a syntax error. So, let's see, what did I screw up? Okay, Yes, so I need another parentheses there to close the if statement. So if I refresh this, it'll say call to a member function render with on a non-object, right? Because render with can only work if the user exists. If the user doesn't exist, then the model hasn't been created up here. And if the model hasn't been created up here, then the function render with hasn't been instantiated. So there's no way that we can actually run this code. So we'll add a statement saying here if this user exists and if that in fact is the case then we'll define this user with this particular rendering scheme which we defined down here let's refresh this again and it'll just say welcome to my killer PHP application now what's neat about this is that we've actually created a variable called user exists and we have inadvertently passed it to the view so if I go to welcome.php, I can create a very simple if statement here saying if this user exists, we're using a different style here, and if, and I'll open another tag here saying else. So this is more as a templating engine. If, you were, if you've done anything with classical ASP or if you've done anything with a you know with Ruby you might have seen this kind of uh, declarative very simple to follow if else for templating and I can say uh oh we don't know who you are please register and here we'll just link to the forward slash. So if I refresh this again, it'll say, uh oh, we don't know who you are, please register. So if I click on register and I put in John and Levensold and my address, so I'll just say Montreal, Canada, and I submit this. And then if I go back to the welcome, it'll say address, Montreal, Canada, first name, last name, and everything else. So now, our application is able to detect whether or not I've already registered and so on and so forth. So in the next video we're going to take this a step further by looking at how we can start passing things to the model and let the model do the saving rather than the setting and stuff in the in the in the view or rather in the controller and also how we can clean up our namespace so that we don't have to do these really long things. Thanks for listening.